Hey guys, welcome to the new session today. Today we are going to discuss about event streaming architecture along with Kafka. We will learn about what is event streaming architecture, what is Kafka, Kafka architecture in details, and also uh, what are the key elements of Kafka architecture. And uh, we have also prepared a um, Spring Boot application with uh, Kafka setup in my Windows system. And we have the thorough configuration of producer, consumer, and its required configurations. So please be with me till the end of this video to know about uh, Kafka in details. So let's get started. So what is even streaming architecture, right? So I, I'll not spend much time on this. Uh, I'll give one very simple example. Uh, streaming data means a constant flow of events with which containing information about an event, right? Or a change of state, right? The data transfer from one place to the other. So that uh, captured all the related information about the event and that flows from one place to the other. We can, you know, like bright example is stock market. Right? In the stock market, every time a stock price changes, a new, new message is created containing the time of date, stock code, and its new trend price. It's called streaming data because there are thousands of uh, stocks and thousands of trades happening every second, resulting in a constant stream of data. Okay, So streaming data is unbounded, meaning it has no real beginning or real end. Each event is processed as it occurs and managed accordingly, according to the business requirement. Okay, so in this diagram, you can see it's a very simple uh, example of, you can say, uh, messaging a server, right? Where you will be having a producer and will be having a consumer. So in the middle, you can call it as a Kafka server or you can name it as a messaging server in this diagram. So... Uh, producer produce a particular uh, uh, message and the consumer is ready to listen to that, right? So it's a very uh, simple structure. So what if in an enterprise structure which is not managed well, right? So if you see the, uh, the data pipeline will look like this. So it's a completely mess, right? So if somebody will ask you to re-architecture the whole um, this uh, complete data pipeline of a complex and enterprise application so you need to set up a messaging server in between and which can you know like streamline all this uh, event transfer or the data transfer happens between the different entities of our applications right so how after you you know, manage well so how does it look like it will look like this where all these, you know, like data pipelines are managed well and through a message messaging system, right? So initially, LinkedIn started exploring about this messaging system and they are looking for a high, uh, high performance and no, none of the messaging uh, services currently that meets their requirement. They are looking for high throttle and uh, uh, parallel executions. So those could not be achieved with whatever the messaging system that we are currently having in this market. So they land up creating Kafka. Okay. So if you look at uh, the Kafka architecture, it simply lies. I mean, the structure is like this. There will be there will be multiple app which will be producing the data to the cluster, Kafka cluster. And there will be multiple consumers will be available to consume that data. And what are the entities we, entities we have? We have stream processor, as it name called stream. It's a data transfer, trace, data transmissions you can also tell. Kafka uh, itself provide a lot of stream APIs. They can play around with this um, um, the data that we are keeping in a cluster and we can transform to a particular business required uh, data 
and that also we can pass it to any other system or we can you know like send back to kafka cluster to be consumed by other consumers then we have connectors which can um, connect to the uh, different uh, persistent databases and it can pull the data and make it available for the different consumer uh, through kafka cluster so this is the overall uh, architecture if i'll say so what are the key elements that we will be having in a uh, in a kafka architecture so you will be having producer consumer broker cluster topic partition offset consumer group so producer you know like who who does the uh, produce the data for the consumers so they are producers and the consumers are who consumes the data and who is broker I inside this if you look at uh, in very high level what this what does this kafka cluster doing it's a it's just a broker it's just a broker of uh, whatever the messages or the data that is coming from producer it's providing to the customer uh, consumer and the cluster this is the you know like uh, the kafka cluster and these brokers are been maintained by zookeeper this cluster is been maintained um, through zookeeper um, in the architecture of kafka so topic what is topic so topic is a name for that particular message is coming because a consumer can ask send me the, the kafka cluster you send me this xyz data so how does we how do we know that exactly data that he needs to pick and provide to the consumer it should have a name so that is the topic okay and what is partitions right let's say you have a huge data huge size data in many a times we have smaller data in uh, you know like uh, enterprise application what if you have a huge data so that you need to split it into partitions right so then only you can you know like kafka cluster you know contain that particular record and make it available to the consumer offset uh, i'm going to discuss about uh, this in in my later part of the screen and the consumer group as well <laughs> so if you look at the you know like um, the kafka introduction in the kafka uh, in their website also you'll find the similar kind of um, just the definition of the uh, apache kafka is a distributed streaming platform what exactly does that mean the streaming platform has three capabilities publish subscribe the stream of record similar to message queue or enterprise messaging system store stream of record in a fault tolerant durable way process stream of record as they occur generally used to broad two classes of application building real time streaming data building a real time streaming application okay so this is broadly these are the definitions of this kafka you guys can very well go through it what are the kafka apis are available there are apis available for producer api consumer api stream apis and uh, connector apis and admin which allows managing inspecting topics broker and other kafka objects so th th these are the partitions you can say and uh, what are the uh, different uh, numbers which is visible to you these are the offset right so the data writes from the left hand side to the right hand side so this is the old data and this is the new data and the data writes uh, from the uh, right hand side and this is how the data is been written to different partitions in a kafka cluster and every partition is an order immutable sequence of record that is continually append to a structure commit log right the uh, the records in a partition are each assigned sequential id number called the offset that uniquely identifies each record within a partition so offset is uniquely identified with these numbers understood so you can identify if you have a topic name partition and uh, the offset then you can exactly landed into a particular message in a cluster and you can also have the uh, retention policy you can 
configured to two days, three days, depending on your business requirement. And after that, these records, whatever is been written to the partisan is no longer will be available in the partisan will be discarded. Okay. And choosing a proper number of partisans for a topic is the key to achieving a high degree of parallelism with respect to rights. Rights to uh, and reads and to distribute load. So how do you, you know, exactly let, calculate? And there are very simple calculation I have. So I'm just going to explain it. This is a very key part, key for, focus on it. Evenly distributed load over partisan is a key factor to have good throughput. Making a good decision requires estimate based on the desired throughput of the producers and the consumer per partisan. I have a few examples for that. Let's get into that. For example, if you want to able to read 1 GB per second, but the consumer is only able to process 50 MB per second, then you need to at least 20 partisans and 20 consumers in the consumer group to achieve to that requirement 1 GB per second. Similarly, if you want to achieve the same for producers and one producer can only write at 100 MB per second, you need 10 partitions. In this case, you have 20 partitions. You can maintain 1 GB per second for producing consuming messages. You should adjust the exact number of partitions, the number of consumers and producers so that each consumer and producer achieve the target throughput. So these are, you need to, you know, like analyze, calculate the exact number of partitions you need, need required depending your throughput requirement, depending in your business requirement. So how do you calculate it's, it, it? I'm just showing a simple formula. The partitions, it has to be a max between NP and NC. What is NP is the number of required producer determined by calculating total uh, expected throughput divided by the max throughput of a single producer in a single partition. Okay, so you have all these calculation in your mind when you are calculating the, um, the uh, number of partitions required for your business requirement. This is going to be very helpful. Okay, so let's get into a Spring Boot project. I have created, I have done a setup in my Windows system, uh, Windows system. So I have different, these are the commands you need to, you need to start your Zookeeper first. So this is the uh, command for it. Then you need to start the Kafka server. I have a single node uh, Kafka along uh, that I have configured. And uh, these are the command like you can create topics and you can also uh, send topics and listen uh, uh, to topics, whatever the data is getting uh, sent by the producers, right? Let's get into a uh, Spring Boot project. So I have created a very simple Spring Boot project. What you need to have is for a wave, uh, you need to have this thing. Spring Boot uh, starter parent uh, dependencies along with the uh, Kafka, uh, Spring Kafka dependencies in your form so that you can uh, do the work. So this is the dependency which is required and this is for creating your web applications. And I have created a controller. So this controller, what it does it publish, there is an API I have exposed, whatever the data you will be sending, it will be sent uh, to the Kafka cluster. And I have written consumer, uh, there is a Kafka listener, I have configured it as service. So this bin will be executed and this will be keep on listening to whatever the data is been sent to demo Kafka, right? The topic I have created is demo Kafka. This listener is listening to demo Kafka and the producer is producing data into this topic, right? The Kafka template and dot send and the topic and the message that you can send it. So let me 
uh, trigger that particular FA. Uh, I have it. Let me clear the logs. I'm going to uh, say hello Kafka. So those data I should able to see. I am able to produce this and also consume it, right? And also the with the command, let me show you in the command console so that it will be little more uh, easy to visualize. So I'm going to I'm going to listen to demo Kafka. Demo Kafka. So this is the command you need to have it handy so that it will be very useful. Okay, so these many data is been sent to the cluster so that it received now. Okay, I'm going to send some different record and into the cluster and I'm going to, you know, like visualize whether those are being listened by the uh, listener or not. Let's say demo for Kafka. If I'm going to send it, so here it comes, demo for Kafka. If I'll send it for multiple times, I should see that. So this is the producer which is producing this data. So in the real time architecture, it will not be a simple string. You will find a queues uh, JSON will, which will be you know like uh, running uh, through this um, uh, Kafka cl cluster architecture. So I'm just sending the data through this publish uh, APIs and I'm listening it. And these also I could visualize in the logs also because my listener is continuously keep on listening to that particular topic. So here it is a very simple. Um, if you if you uh, work on this event streaming architecture, this is uh, make your life easy and uh, make a better architecture defined for your projects in your enterprise application. So please uh, go and follow and try using Kafka. That will make your life easy and also the uh, supporting part also be will be very easy and uh, and uh, th that's all I have and uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video if you have not uh, subscribed to my channel kindly do subscribe uh, for our videos like this and uh, thank you so much for your support please do like and share with the videos thank you